Hello students and now we are uh, doing to do some very good selected questions of understanding quadrilaterals which are which are asked at NCRT level in class 8 and I hope you have gone through the chapter very carefully so let's jump straight into the questions part okay and let's apply the properties of triangles as well in all the questions and let's see okay the first question find x in the following figure now if you you know that the sum of the exterior angles interior angles of a triangle is 180 degree but some of the exterior angles of a triangle is always 360 degree so the sum of these two will be three will be 360 degree so x will be equal to 360 minus 125 plus 125 which is equal to 250 so 360 minus 250 is 110 degrees so answer for this question is 110 degree Okay, next question is you have to find the value of x here. So if you see over here, again, the sum of the exterior angles is always 360 degree, whether it's a triangle or a quadrilateral or whatever polygon. Okay, so if you see the sum of this, this angle 90 degree, this angle 60 degree, and this is also 90 degree. Okay, so this sum of these four, five angles is always 360 degree. So you can say x plus 70 plus 60 plus 90 plus 90 is equal to 360 degrees. So X will be equal to 70 plus 60 is 130, 90 plus 90 is 180, 180 plus 130 is 310. So 360 minus 310 is 50 degrees. So the X value of X is 50 degree. Okay. Find the measure of each exterior angle of a regular polygon of nine sides. We, as I just told you, the measure of each exterior angle of a regular polygon of nine sides, the sum of the angles is 360. So for the first part, the number exterior angle will be 360 by nine, which is equal to 40 degree. And by that same logic, the second value will be 360 divided by 15, which is equal to 24 degree. Third, Question, how many sides does regular polygon have if the measure of an exterior angle is 24 degrees? I just found out that if the measure of an exterior angle is 24 degree, the number of sides is 15. So the number of sides of this will be 15. Right? Let's move on to the next set of questions. How many sides does a regular polygon have if each of its interior angle is 165 degrees? So we know that some of the interior angles is so the interior angles is n minus 2 into 180 degree. And each interior angle of a polygon is equal to n minus 2 into 180 divided by n. This is each interior angle of a regular polygon. Okay, so let's solve this. If n minus 2 into 180 divided by n is equal to 165. So if I cancel this one, it is 12 and this is 11. I'm doing question number four here right now. Okay, so 12n minus 24 is equal to 11n. So n will be equal to 24. So number of sides is 24. Okay, is it possible to have a regular polygon with the measure of each exterior angle is 22 degree? Now, if the exterior angle is 22 degree, the value of each exterior angle has to be 360 by n. Right, so if that is 22 degree, now if you calculate the value of n, then it will be 360 by 22, which is a fractional number. Now sides cannot be in fraction, hence the answer is no. Can it be an interior angle of a regular polygon? Let's do this, n minus two into 180 degree. If exterior angle is, one, is 22 degree, n minus two into 180 divided by n is equal to 20, 22 degree. Now, again, if you solve this one again, it comes out to a fraction. So the sides cannot be in fraction. That's why the answer will be no. What is the minimum interior angle possible for a regular polygon? What is the minimum interior angle possible for a regular polygon? So the minimum interior angle, the regular polygon must have at least three sides. So the minimum interior angle has to be how much? 60 degree. So the minimum value of an exterior angle has to be, of an interior angle has to be 60 degree. It cannot be less than 60 degree, right? If it becomes less than 60 degree, then it is not a polygon, okay? So 
60 degrees. So the answer for this question is the minimum interior angle has to be 60 degree. And for uh, why? Because it has to have a minimum of three sides. Okay. And what is the maximum in exterior angle? So the minimum interior angle is 60 degrees. So the value of the exterior angle has to be maximum. So what is the maximum exterior angle? 180 minus 60 is 120 degrees. The answer for this question is 120 degrees. So maximum exterior angle is 120 degrees. Let's move on to the next set of questions. Now here we are dealing specifically with the properties of parallelograms and uh, rhombuses and everything. So here in the first question, you have to value, find the values of X, Y, Z. So if you see this is 100, so this has to be 100. Opposite angles are equal. And this is 100 and this has to be 80 because some of the interior adjacent interior angles has to be 180. So if this is 80, this also has to be 80. So this is the value for the answer values for the first question. Now let's move on to the next question. Now this is 50. This has to be 130. And if this is 130. This also will be 130. Why? Because the corresponding angles in the parallel lines are equal. And this is 130. This also will be 130 because the alternate angles has to be equal. Right? So these are the values. Now move on to the next one. So this is 30. This is 90 degree. So this also will be 90 degrees. So X will be 90 degree, right? Now X will be 90 degree. This is 30 degree. So this will be how much? The sum of these two angles will be 90 degrees. So this is 30. This must be 60. So Y is 60 degree. Now again, this is 30 degree. This also will be 30 degree. So if this is 30, these two angles will make up 90 because this angle is 90. So Z has to be 60 degree. Also, we can say that Y and Z are alternate angles. So Y is 60, Z is also 60. So we can do it by various ways. Okay, now similarly this question. Now this is 80, this has to be 80. And this is 80, this also will be 80. Opposite angles of a parallelogram are equal, right? So these two are 80. And uh, you can see the alternate and the, in, uh, the sum of the adjacent interior angles has to be 180. So this is 80, this has to be 100 degrees. Okay, now let's move on to this question. Now this is 112, the opposite angles of a parallelogram of rhombus is equal. So this is also 112 degrees. Now this angle is 112, this is 40. So this is 152. So this will be equal to 28 degrees because the sum of the angles of a triangle is always 180 degrees. Now this is 28 degrees. This also will be 28 degrees because the alternate angles are always equal to, are always equal to each other. So the values are hence found out. Now let's move on to the next question. Two adjacent angles of a parallelogram have equal measure. Find the measure of each of the angles. So we can say if two adjacent angles are of equal measure, so these two angles are equal measure. This can only be possible if these two angles are 90 degrees. Okay, so if this angle is 90, this is also 90. So all the angles are 90 degrees. Right? Seventh question, the adjacent figure hope is a parallelogram. Find the angle measures X, Y, Z. I request you to do these questions because this question is same as what we have done till now in the fifth part, right? But still I'll find out for you, okay? So try this question yourself, okay? Uh, this is 40 degree. So this is 110 degrees because some of the uh, linear pair is always 110. So this is 110. This also will be 110. Okay, now this is 110 and this is 110. So the again, we, we can say that Y and Z will become 70 degree. Y plus Z is equal to 70 degrees. Okay, so this is 110, this is 40. So this must be 30 degrees. Okay, now if this is 30 degrees, the, the alternate angle Z will also be 30 degrees. So Z is 30 degrees. Now Y and Z will make 70 degrees. So can I say that if Z is 30, Y must be 40 degrees? Because the alternate angles are also equal. We can do this like, we can do it in that way as well. Okay. So this is how you do the question. Now let's move on to the next set of question in parallelograms. 
So if you see guns and runs are parallelograms, find x and y. So opposite sides are always equal. So 3y minus 1 is equal to 26. So y will be equal to 9. And opposite angles 3x is equal to 18. So x will be equal to 6. Very simple. Right? In the next question, we have got a parallelogram. Right? Runs is also a parallelogram. We know the parallelogram the diagonals bisect each other. So y plus 7 is equal to 20 y will be equal to 13. Similarly, x plus y will be equal to 16. And y is equal to 13. So x must be equal to 3. So x is equal to 3 and y is equal to 13. That's the answer. OK, let's move on to the next question. Right? Pause the video wherever you find any problem in understanding. OK, now I have to find the value of x here. In this case, you have to find only the value of x. Now, both are parallel. Risk and clue are all parallelograms. Okay, so we can say if this is 70 degrees, can we say this is also 70 degrees? And if this is 120, so this must be 60 degrees. So this also will be 60 degrees because the opposite angles of parallelogram are 60 degrees. So 70 plus 60 is 130 and some of angles of this triangle is 180. So 70 plus 60 is 130. So x will be equal to 50 degrees. So answer for this question is 50 degrees. So the value of x is 50 degrees. Okay, let's move on to the next question. And I have the questions of true and false. All rectangles are squares. All rectangles are squares. What do what do we mean by this? All rectangles are squares. Are you, uh, I mean, I want your views on that. Is this a true statement or a false statement? Think about this. So we cannot say that all rectangles are squares, but all squares are definitely rectangles because all the angles are 90 degree. A square is a specialized form of rectangle. So all rectangles cannot be squares. Okay, again, all kites are rhombuses. Now, rhombuses, all sides are equal, but kite, all sides uh, are not equal. Adjacent sides are equal. So, all kites are rhombuses. That's also a wrong statement. So, this is a false statement. This is a false statement. All rhombuses are parallelograms. Yes. All, all parallelograms, all rhombuses are parallelograms because opposite sides are parallel. Yes, we can say this. All rhombuses are kites. Okay, all rhombuses are kites. Rhombuses, all the sides are equal. Kites, adjacent sides are equal. So we cannot say this. All rhombuses are kites. Is this, think about this. All rhombuses are kites. Are they, is this a true statement or a false statement? All rhombuses are kites is definitely a true statement, right? All rhombuses are kites are definitely a true statement because the diagonals of a rhombus bisect each other, but the diagonals of a kite do not bisect each other, right? So we can also say that all sides of rhombus are equal to each other, but the kites have two adjacent pairs of equal sides. So we can say all rhombuses are kites, but all kites are rhombuses. We cannot definitely say this. Okay. All squares are rhombuses and also rectangles. So all squares are rectangles is correct statement. All squares are rhombuses. We cannot say this. All squares are rhombuses. Are, uh, uh, we cannot say definitely. Let's think about this. All squares are rhombuses. Is this a true statement or a false statement? Think a little bit. All squares are rectangles. Yes. All squares are rhombuses. Can we say this? Yes, we can say this. A square is always a rhombus, right? Because the, all the sides of a square are always equal in length. And also the diagonals bisect each other. 
at right angles. That's the property of a square as well as a rhombus. It's just that a rhombus, the adjacent angles are not 90 degrees. So all squares are rhombuses and also rectangles. Yes, that's a true statement. Right? All the parallelograms are trapeziums? No, that we cannot say this definitely. So it is a false statement. All squares are trapeziums, it's definitely a false statement, okay? And all squares are not parallelograms. Think a little bit, is this a true statement or a false statement? All squares are parallelograms, but all parallelograms may not be squares, right? Think a little bit about this question. So all squares are parallelograms, but all parallelograms may not be squares. All squares are parallelograms, yes. It's a true statement, okay? Think a little bit. Identify all the quadrilaterals. Now let's move on to the next question. Identify all the quadrilaterals that have four sides of equal length. Okay, so all the quadrilaterals, we can say rhombus and square have all sides of equal length. Identify all the quadrilaterals that have four right angles. We can say rectangles and squares have four right angles. Right, now from the, from the explanation which I've just given you, explain how a square is a quadrilateral because it's a four-sided figure, how a square is a parallelogram because the opposite sides are parallel, how a square is a rhombus because all sides are equal in a diagonals, bisect each other at right angles, how a square is a rectangle because all the adjacent angles are 90 degrees, okay? So that's how we can infer. Name the quadrilaterals whose diagonals bisect each other. So diagonals bisect each other, it is parallelograms. Okay, rhombus, rectangle, squares. So these are all the quadrilaterals whose diagonals bisect each other. Okay. Which are the quadrilaterals whose diagonals are perpendicular bisectors of each other? We can say specialized quadrilaterals like squares and rhombuses have their diagonals, which are perpendicular bisectors of each other. And name the quadrilaterals whose uh, diagonals are equal. We can definitely say parallelogram, right, square, rectangle, okay? These are the parallelograms. Uh, let me see, no, parallelogram, the diagonals are not, may not be equal, but squares and rectangles, the diagonals are definitely equal, okay? So this, this, this is the uh, exercise for the quadrilaterals. Hope you enjoyed the lectures, okay? Uh, and it, until we meet in the Next class, hope you continue your learning and uh, VMC is always there to help you and out in that uh, purpose. Thank you so much. Wonderful teaching all of you. Thank you.